Hello everyone, today's video I'm hoping it's going to be very interesting because I'm going to try to upgrade the CPU there and this is a 7 year old computer, it's a Ryzen 1 series, 1700 model CPU under there. Uh, this has been running very nicely, it's on the original motherboard which is a Gigabyte GAAB 350 gaming 3 motherboard it's a revision 1 point something 1.x 1.1 it's the original motherboard that was first available on the market when the cpu was launched and it's very interesting because uh, gigabyte although they do not have this habit they have continuously updated the bios on this uh, board and they recently added full support for the Ryzen 9 series uh, and this is the 5000 series actually and this should theoretically work just by swapping out the CPU which are we are going to do today and if we look here on the CPU compatibility list released by Gigabyte we can see the Ryzen 9 5900X which I'm ha having here the 12 core model it's uh, fully supported in the uh, last uh, BIOS. Actually, it's last and previous, so on the previous BIOS, it's already been supported. So, I'm going to shut this off. And now I'm going to remove the old CPU. That's very easy to do. If you are interested about my cooling setup here, you can find my video somewhere on my channel. It's an ID cooling, X-Flow, Aura Flow, something like that. Aura Flow, if I'm not mistaken. It has a 360 millimeter radiator in the front. Three coolers, one uh, 120 millimeters. So nothing extraordinary only on uh, pool configuration I don't have uh, although I have here space to have push coolers so also I have not installed those so this is out I'm just going to let it hang here but not force it all right and now I'm going to take out the old CPU the Ryzen 1, it has served its purpose, it was a beautiful CPU. And now let's take a look, not that we have something to see on, take a look at the new one. Actually taking a look means just installing it. Okay, there's our beauty. And always be careful when you are installing it. You know that pinout here is different. You have here a finger. I like to call it a finger. It's pointing. It has this arrow. And this should be oriented properly into the socket so you don't bend anything so this should go in nicely here it's in i'm going to keep it pressed i'm going to press the lever now we are going to put some thermal paste usually when you are doing this it should be flat on a table but i want to do a quick swap i'm going to just Put this about around here better okay and now we are ready to put the cooler back so put take care with the wires so they do not get caught underneath and this is back into position now we need to Put the screws back. Uh, yes, it's holding nice. And 
I'm going to hide the wires later. And as simple as that, I have swapped the CPU several generations, which I find amazing. And I find it hard to believe that is going to work so easy without changing the motherboard, without changing the RAM, without changing anything else. And you can see also that I'm running a not recommended setup. I'm using two type of uh, RAM sticks, two of one kind and two of another kind. At least they are the same brand. They are within the same speed specifications, but two of them are low profile and the other two are RGB ones. So we have a next up configuration here. So this is pretty tight. So I'm going to power on the power supply, connect it to the mains. And now let's turn this on. And it did a kind of double boot. It has turned off, on again. So I'm going to let it do its thing for now. Let's see if it wakes up. And as nicely as that, we have power, it seems to work, so it asked me if I did uh, some kind of uh, FTPM uh, bit locker, uh, which if I remember correctly, I did not, so I do not need to recover that. But to be on the safe side, I'm going to use the N options to keep the previous one if it was available. And we are back under the operating system. And just like that, all the cores are there running nicely. But now I have to rework all the cooling uh, curves of my BIOS because uh, this is going haywire. Um, it's going up and down continuously because I had some uh, settings. And let's see the Ryzen Master. I need to reinstall that because I've changed the CPU. And now let's also do some uh, quick checking into the BIOS. So there's the CPU, 44 degrees, but it's idle. I'm going to go to the memory settings. Also, I'm going to enable XMP back because it has been disabled. Voltage is standard. See health. Here it's doing just fine. So I'm not going to change any more of that stuff for now. I'm just going to go back. And of course now it's time to run some benchmarks which I'm going to add later as another video because I'm curious to see the difference between my old CPU which was also overclocked at 3.6 from 3.0 3.0 was stock 3.6 was my very stable overclock and I'm curious to see if it scales nicely with my graphics card or not or um, how is this going to look when um, it's running with the new CPU so I'm going to do some test comparisons with my old CPU and my new CPU and I'm going to do a full video on that also. Last but not least, a word of caution. There is one single problem with this configuration. The motherboard is not a high performance motherboard and is not very well built. Uh, and it completely lacks here cooling for the VRMs which should be scorching hot right now. I can feel them from a distance. Uh, on this side it has a radiator that is doing a very good job but on this they went on the chip side so 
this part here it's super hot so I'm going to keep this motherboard as long as it will work but I'm going to do a do-it-yourself thing here and add an extra fan so it cools that part of the motherboard so it doesn't burn out too quickly and here is the Ryzen Master you can see here the temperature is rather normal but now it's idle it's not doing anything but it's worth a checkup and going advanced now we have a lot more tools to play because the Ryzen Master application for the Series 1 CPU was uh, much more limited but you could do some nice stuff with that also but this one has a lot more things that you can work on with so that was it for now I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, quick video so if you are having an old AMD PC and you want a huge bump in processing power you don't need anything else just change the CPU even my mixed up RAM memory works brilliantly with EXP profile enabled. Oh, until my next video, see you and bye bye.